A great deal has been written about the world around you. Great countries, unusual places, seven wonders of the world, and lots more. The introduction of modern technology brings into reality an insight of those wonderful places to movies at cinemas and home televisions. This movie will not bring you to any of those gigantic lands or any of those wonders of the world. Instead, it shall introduce you to a rather remote island located somewhere not so near to the edge of the eastern part of the Indian Ocean. in the Eastern Indian Ocean some 200 miles south of the Sunda Straits and 875 miles north of the Australian continent. It should not be confused with Christmas Island in the Pacific Ocean. This oceanic island is only 52 square miles in area. Historically, the island was sighted on Christmas Day in 1643 by the captain of the British East India Company ship where some 3,300 people are resident on the island, consisting of Chinese, Malay, Europeans, Indians, and other mixed races. Phosphate mining is virtually the only commercial activity on the island. Christmas Island had been administered from Singapore since 1900, but on 1st of January 1958, it became a separate British Crown colony. On 1st of October of the same year, it became an Australian territory. the way for pure jet aircraft to service the island. The Trans-Australia Airlines made its first Boeing 727 landing on the strip on 6th of June 1974. This follows by other airlines using Boeing 727 aircraft to transport passengers, mail and cargo between Australia, Cocos Island, Singapore and Malaysia.
appointed by the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia administers the territory on behalf of the Commonwealth. Law and order in the territory are maintained by the Christmas Island Police Force. This law is comprised of the laws of the colony of Singapore together with certain regulations made by the administrator of the colony of Christmas Island during the period 1st of January to 30th of September 1958. A current legislative amendment approved by the government concerns the extension to the territory of the Migration Act of 1958 which extends Australian permanent resident status to all workers and their families on Christmas Island. Christmas Island's early discovery, the islands remained uninhabited until the year 1888 when Britain annexed it after realizing the potential of its phosphates. The Australian and New Zealand governments in 1948 established the Christmas Island Phosphate Commission. The commission then engaged the British phosphate commissioners who had been mining Nauru and Ocean Island in the Pacific Ocean as agents to conduct the operations. More of the mining operations will be shown later in this part of the film. While the island relies on overseas radio telephone and teletype and its air and sea charter services and Radio Australia to link it with the outside world, up to date, the outside world had heard little of Christmas Island. With the assistance of two other Christmas Islands, one in the Lion Islands of the Pacific and the other of Nova Scotia in the Atlantic, it is not surprising the island's whereabouts caused the occasional confusion. Majority of the island's phosphate employees were recruited from Singapore and Malaysia. The British phosphate commissioners are the major employers in the territory. The Christmas Island administration and a number of small private shops provide some further employment. Christmas Island Agreement of 1958 between Australia and New Zealand, the net cost of administering the territory is met by the Christmas Island Phosphate Commission. The largest retail outlet on the island 
is the grocery and general trade store operated by the British Phosphate Commissioners. Its main trade is in food plants which provide for a range of diets within the island's community. There are a number of small traders who sell duty-free goods. Christmas Island is the summit of a submarine mountain, rises steeply to a central plateau reaching heights of up to 1,170 feet. From the plateau, the land drops to the sea in a series of terraces, terminating in a sea cliff ranging in height from 10 to 150 feet, which continues around most of the island. Tall timber forest provides a pleasant screen on the drive down to the inhabited terraces in descending order. Drumside, Punsan, Sola City, Silver City and downwards to the commercial settlement area. There are only five major roads in the island and some minor roads in all developed areas. services on the island are provided by the administration and do not come